Welcome to Sweet Home Evangelical Church. It's Pastor Brian here for Sweet Home Evangelical Church online service. And uh, so we are into December here and uh, things are going on around the church. We've got the, we got the normal Christmas trees out at the out at our parking lot there and, and people keep getting their cheap Christmas trees. Uh, we're collecting food for the food boxes and uh, we'll be doing uh, 25 of these uh, for families in need that apply to Shem here in town. And uh, so we're collecting food and funds uh, and Donalyn is calling to see if they, you know, when they can show up or when they, you know, when we're handing them out and uh, if do they want a turkey or a ham and all of that. So that's, that's good stuff going on to help out families in need, especially these days. And so that's kind of normal Christmas. There's a lot of just, you know, strange stuff going on this year, but we're, we're trying to charge ahead and do some normal Christmas things, uh, like helping out those who need some help. And in the middle of all of this chaos, we remember that it is about Jesus. Uh, this year, we're not able to do the birthday party for Jesus, which is an awesome deal, uh, but it really is the birthday for Jesus. And uh, there's uh, the song, oh, one of the Christmas carols, Angels from the Realms of Glory. And uh, the song, uh, the chorus there, come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. And that's what we do at Christmas. And today is the third Sunday of Advent. It's the Sunday for worship. Uh, our scripture is from Matthew chapter 2. When they saw the star... They were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Lord God, we come to you today and we worship you. You are the Christ. You are this newborn king. You are the one that we've been looking for. And Lord, help us to remember uh, it is really, it's about you. It's your birthday, and we, we remember you. We worship you. We pray that we could focus on you today. Pray that you would open up your word to us today, that you would speak and I could get out of the way. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's, uh, there's that movie, Home Alone. Uh, I never really watched the movie when it came out in theaters because I was in college and it seemed like it was a little kid movie. And uh, so, you know, I was doing research uh, last week and, and watched Home Alone. And, uh, you know, for some reason, a lot of people like Home Alone. It's one of their favorite Christmas movies. And they give the whole plot away right in the title there, don't they? Home Alone. The whole family, plus, you know, aunts and uncles and cousins and everything, they're getting ready to go to Paris for Christmas because apparently they got way too much money. And, and Kevin is the youngest of all the whole family, all the cousins. And Kevin, everybody's just being so mean to him at the beginning of the movie, and they're treating him horribly, and he doesn't like it, and he just, he says he wished that he lived alone. He wished everybody would just leave him alone, and he lived by himself. Well, that night, the power goes out, the family oversleeps, and in their mad rush to get to the airport, they forget to bring Kevin along with them. Kevin wakes up and the house is empty and he is home alone. And then he thinks it's great and, you know, little kid stuff and he's, he's having a good time. Yet as the story goes on, Kevin realizes that being alone isn't as much fun as he thought it would be. And, and he realizes how much he misses his family. And there's a scene in the movie uh, that's kind of a turning point where Kevin is realizing that he, he kind of misses his family. And then he, uh, he goes to church and he has a chat with the neighbor who lives alone. And at the beginning of the movie, Kevin thought, boy, that would be great to live by yourself and be alone. And he's finding out his neighbor really feels lonely. And his neighbor is alone because he had big fight with his son and hasn't 
hasn't talked with him for years, and, and Kevin is missing his family, and he encourages his neighbor to try and fix that broken relationship with his son. And, uh, and so that's kind of a turning point in the movie. The movie starts with the family being this dysfunctional group of people who aren't getting along. And in the end, the family comes together. Everybody lives happily ever after, at least until the sequel comes out. And the movie Home Alone is one of those enduring movies because it hits on this universal theme of loneliness at Christmas. This time of year tends to accentuate the loneliness that a lot of people feel at Christmas. There's this emphasis on Christmas cheer, and if you are not feeling cheerful, you feel even more left out and alone. And we're having a, a COVID Christmas this year, and um, we are learning lessons of what it means to be home alone and having fewer and smaller gatherings uh, you know, and today's sermon is going to be, I don't know, it, I'm going to get you depressed and then hopefully bring you out of it. But uh, it, we live in America where we tend to rebel against things we don't like. And, and so there are rebellions taking place against these COVID rules. And, and even those that follow the rules very carefully, they're happy about it. And part of the reason <laughs> for all this rebellion against the COVID rules, part of it, not all of it, but part of it is people get lonely and they just want to be around other people. We struggle with calm and silence and being alone now more than ever. Social distancing, it's been a tough deal for a lot of people and a lot of people just aren't handling it well. Suicide rates are higher this year than ever before. Calls to suicide hotlines are higher than ever before. Our world is struggling with hopelessness and loneliness. And as we approach Christmas, there's all these events that are canceled and not happening. And we think that it's just not Christmas unless we do all of these certain events and activities and programs and all of that. Yet December 25th is coming, you know, in spite of all of it. And as we're having fewer and more socially distanced events, we're getting closer to what the first Christmas was like. There's a, there's a big element of loneliness in that first Christmas, in that Christmas story. Mary was by herself when the angel showed up and said that she is going to give birth to the Messiah. She has this story about how God's spirit came on her and now she is pregnant without ever being with her fiancé Joseph or any other man. This virgin birth was foretold in the Old Testament, yet there's a lot of people that did not believe her, which probably made her feel even more alone. Even her fiancé was struggling and he wanted to break off the engagement but it took a supernatural dream and visitation from the Lord that uh, Joseph should go ahead and marry uh, his, his fiance and raise this child. And, and all of this, there's this element of loneliness and just it's a little depressing. Yet we need to look at the Bible and see what, is, what does God's word say about being lonely? You know, honestly, I probably wouldn't preach on the subject of loneliness, especially at Christmas. That's just not what I would normally preach on. But with all that's being canceled this year, all the social distancing these days, everybody is struggling with a low-grade depression and loneliness uh, in their lives. And what is God's message for us in this situation? So as we are in a sense, living out the movie Home Alone. I've got an acrostic on the word alone. I like acrostics, so we got an acrostic on alone, A-L-O-N-E. So we got five points here. And number A, accept the family that God gives you. We need to accept the family that God gives you. A lot of people are experiencing loneliness, but it's a self-inflicted loneliness. They withdraw from people, and then they complain that they're lonely. Uh, I had a, um, 
Oh, I had a guy in, in my church when I pastored uh, in, uh, I think, uh, in Eugene, and uh, he and his wife had, had a lot of problems. And for a while there, they had a big fight, and she moved out, and he was, he, he, you know, I talked with him on the phone. He's struggling, of course. And I told him, you know, you need to come to church, okay? You can't just stay at home all by yourself. You need to come to church. And he came to church that Sunday, and then I had a chat with him for about an hour after church that day, and he talked about how everybody just looked at him and judged him and, and didn't talk to him, and, and it was horrible. And I, I tried to explain to him, um, you know, there, a, lo a lot of times there is a difference between our feelings and reality. Sometimes they're the same thing, but sometimes they are different, and this is one of those times. And re the reality was hardly anybody in the church even knew that your wife has moved out temporarily. There were only just a handful of people, and all of them were just happy that you were there. And they didn't talk about it because they didn't really know what to say. And a lot of people, they, they create their own loneliness like the guy in my church in Eugene because they push people away and they, they try to do this mind reading where they think, oh, they're judging me, oh, they don't like me. But God calls us to accept the family that we have. Mary and Joseph, they were engaged, but in that culture, that didn't mean that they always knew each other well. Uh, an engagement was was uh, many times orchestrated by the family. Uh, Mary was this young woman. She was the prophesied uh, virgin who would conceive a child. She was a sign pointing to the Messiah. Like it says in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child. And it said so right in the scripture, yet this is not an easy assignment. You see, even people didn't believe it. Even during Jesus' ministry, people still had jokes about him being conceived out of wedlock, to put it politely. Joseph was going to quietly break off the engagement. He, he would rather be alone than have, this, have all of this chaos and he was, he was just going just gonna to let it go and just be alone instead of marrying this woman who he, he thought had been unfaithful to him. And, and he would have this social black eye of his former fiance having a baby, but he would, he would just be done with this. And an angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him, you need to choose this family over loneliness. Do not choose loneliness. God has a plan, and God wants you to choose this family. This may not have been your original plan, but God was telling Joseph, you need to take Mary to be your wife. You need to raise this child. Accept the family that God gives you, even if it's not quite what you had imagined or hoped for or planned. See, God has, has, God's plan is for people to be in families. The first problem that God fixed uh, in his creation was to address this problem of Adam being alone. That's the first thing God fixed in, in creation. God uh, makes Adam, and then he says, you know, it's not good for him to be alone. And he makes Eve. It says in uh, Psalm 68, God places the lonely in families. God's plan is for fellowship, for community, for family. And when you are a Christian, God places you in a spiritual family called the church. God never intends for his people to try to go through life alone. You may not realize it, but there are people around you who are just as lonely as you are and they need you just as much as you need them. Uh, this, is, this is why I try to connect with other pastors as much as possible. 
uh, and uh, I do these Zoom meeting things. I, uh, a lot of times I'll just pick up a phone and, and call a pastor either here in town or in the conference. This is why I appreciate being a part of a denomination because we got these, this family of pastors that, that we can be a part of, and I try to encourage them, but it's encouraging to me just to chat with them. And in the Bible, there's this phrase that comes up over and over again. The phrase is one another. As followers of Jesus, we are to love one another. We are to be devoted to one another. We are to honor one another, uh, to encourage one another, serve one another, bear one another's burdens, comfort one another, pray for one another. You, if you read the Bible, you get the idea that if you're going to follow Jesus and do this according to God's word, you don't do it by yourself. We need to do this with one another. And maybe you're like Joseph and you had a, a picture in your mind of what life was going to be like, but God, you are called to accept the family that God has placed you in. Uh, God doesn't do things by accident. God has a family, a family or a spiritual family, a church. God places you in this family. We need each other. Uh, that's, that's letter A. Uh, except the family God gives you, and, and letter L, number L here, losses need to be grieved. Those losses need to be grieved. Pe Christmas is many times, it's just depressing time of year for some people, because with all the Christmas joy and happiness, it just accentuates those that you cannot share the season with. Uh, my Years ago, uh, my first Christmas after I got divorced, boy, that was horrible. That was horrible. So tough. I know this whole lockdown thing, it's just, it's separating families. It's keeping families apart. Our, my wife and I, we haven't been to Canada to see her family in a long time. Uh, and there are those who have passed away during this, this past year, and, and we just, recognize that there are those that are not here this Christmas that were around last year at Christmas, and it, that pain is felt. Mary and Joseph, they know what you're going through. When we read through the Bible, we get a sense of hospitality. I've read in, in oh, I got a book on like customs of, of the you know, time of the Bible and things, and there's this, this idea of hospitality. Uh, Abraham and the patriarchs hospitality. People would come through, they say, hey, come stay, let me feed you, stay with us, let me take care of you. In, in an era when they didn't have Motel 6, Marriott, Super 8, or anything like that, people would welcome strangers into their home. Mary and Joseph, they went to Bethlehem because there was the census, and they had to go to the birthplace of Joseph to register for the census. This was where Joseph was born. This is his hometown. But nobody welcomed him in. Nobody, that, none of his friends that he grew up with, none of his family, who also had to go to Bethlehem to register for the census. The whole family is there, but there's no room for Joseph and his pregnant, out-of-wedlock wife, Mary. No nice, clean hospital for Mary going into labor, just a smelly barn. Until just a few months before this, Joseph was a single guy, and now he's delivering a baby in a barn, okay? If it was me, I, I would have done that, but, you know, my wife at this point, she's just probably laughing hysterically, thinking about me trying to deliver a baby. You know, I would do it if I had to, but first I would have asked everybody in town at least twice, hey, could you help out because this Mary, Mary's going to have a baby and, and I just, I'd rather not be sitting there with the catcher's mitt waiting for the baby to come out. I, that's just, that's not me. But Joseph and Mary had no other choice. It's one thing to spend a night in a, in a barn alone with each other, but alone when a baby is coming and a baby's born, and it, it's just such great sadness that must have been there. And in the midst of our loneliness, 
<coughs> we need to properly grieve our losses so that we can move on. It's okay to grieve. It is normal. Even God grieves. In the Old Testament, in the prophet uh, Hosea, uh, God grieves the loss of the nation Israel. He compares his grief to the loss of Hosea's unfaithful wife. God grieves. We can't ignore loss. We need to grieve those losses so we can move forward. We know, I think we all know people who have had pain and loss in their life and they hang on to that and, and they won't let that go and that keeps them from moving forward in life. And, and I, we need to properly grieve our losses. As painful as it is, it is more than appropriate to spend some time during Christmas as we remember those who are not with us this year that we were able to be with last year. Losses need to be grieved. And the third one, number O, uh, opportunity to listen to God. This is an opportunity to listen to God. We live in this highly connected society, this noisy society. When I worked at the radio station, I mean, the worst thing we could have is dead air because people, you know, when there's dead air, people will change radio stations and we act like life is a radio station where we just need to have constant noise going on, whether it's, you know, radio or computer or, you know, phone or whatever. Uh, we got to have something going on. We don't know how to just sit in a chair and be quiet. We, we think, you know, this is so horrible to us. We use this as punishment for children <coughs> to put them in a chair and be quiet and put them in time out and just sit there quietly. That is punishment these days. As a society, we've forgotten how to just sit quietly in one spot and do nothing. This is just called being a person, but we can't do it because if we sit quietly, we might have some feelings and emotions that we don't want to have to deal with. However, we need to embrace those times of loneliness and silence because those are the times when God can speak to you. In the Old Testament, there's a story about Elijah. Uh, Elijah was waiting for God to speak to him. The prophet Elijah went out there and, and he's waiting for God and a windstorm comes along and God is not in the noisy windstorm. Earthquake happens. God is not in the earthquake. Fire happens. There's a big raging fire, but God doesn't speak through that either. But after the noise from the earth, wind and fire came the still small voice of God, this gentle whisper. And it was in that time of quietness that God spoke to the prophet. And it's in our times of quietness when we are more likely and, and more able to hear from God. You know, the angel didn't appear to Mary when she was with her whole family. The message didn't come when she was at the mall or at church or downtown around a bunch of people. It came when she was alone. This world needs to hear from God now more than ever. Uh, take advantage of these quiet times because it's an opportunity to listen to God. All right, we're up to number four, uh, number N. N in alone, A-L-O-N, stands for never totally alone. Never totally alone. When we struggle with loneliness, just know that you are never totally alone. I, I know that when you're going through turmoil and difficulty, sometimes it just feels like you're alone because nobody really understands what you're going through. But the message of Christmas is that you are never totally alone. The prophet Isaiah I talked about earlier talks about this coming Messiah. Isaiah 7, verse 14, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and will call his name Emmanuel, which means what? Means God with us. Jesus is the Emmanuel. He is God with us. Not just, not just someone born uh, a baby human who is another person here on planet Earth, 
but he is God with us in a very special way. The Gospel of Matthew, in the New Testament, we got the Gospel of Matthew and the very end, the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, the very last words of this, this message of Jesus, this, this Gospel, it says in Matthew 28, 20, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When you ask Jesus to forgive your sins, when you invite him into your heart, he will be with you always. You may have times when you feel alone, but you're not totally alone. Jesus is with you. In the Old Testament, God spoke to Joshua, and God uh, set, had a message for Joshua. And then in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, it picks it up, and it says, this same message that went to Joshua is for all believers, and the message is God will never leave you or forsake you. Even when you are feeling alone, God will not leave you. Even when you're socially distanced from people, God does not socially distance from you. To deal with loneliness, we need to accept the family that God gives us. We need to, those losses need to be grieved. It's an opportunity to listen to God. Yet we are never totally alone because God is with us. And the last one, number E, we should simply enjoy the silence. Enjoy the silence. Lockdowns and quarantines, they're all about attitude, aren't they? Some people are handling it better than others are. This is especially tough on extroverts who just need to be around people and have an audience and just have people to interact with. But there are introverts out there that are kind of doing okay-ish or better than others because they, they, they're normally introverted and they don't hang out with other people a lot. However, we, we do need to figure out how to enjoy the silence. One of the books I, I read for school uh, is one of these business books, and it, and it talks about silence and solitude in the workplace. And, and the author talks about how companies are recognizing the benefits of silence, and they're encouraging their employees to take just 10 minutes a day, just 10 minutes a day in complete silence. Once a day, usually first thing in the morning when you get to work, just take 10 minutes in silence. And these businesses are recognized the benefits of solitude and silence and how it resets everything and increases productivity in their employees. It's interesting how businesses are recognizing silence may be a good thing. Did you know that silence is a way to honor God? Oh, it's not the only way to honor God, but honoring God isn't always about, you know, a bunch of, bunch of music, a bunch of worship, or a bunch of preaching and talking and praying and all of that. Sometimes we can honor God with just our silence. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 says, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. In Revelation... It talks about a time of silence in heaven. We follow Jesus who silenced the storm. Remember the big storm on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus calms the storm. And Jesus would often withdraw to quiet places for prayer. Just get away in quietness and silence to spend time in prayer. Every year we get ourselves overbooked uh, especially at Christmas, and this year is a bit different, and we need to learn to just enjoy the silence. It might be a nice change, uh, being kind of like the kid in the movie Home Alone, and yet in the quietness, God may speak to you. He may not speak to you, yet in the quietness, we are open and ready for God to speak to us so that we can find God's peace. One of the themes of Advent is peace, which seems so elusive in our world, so elusive during a busy, overbooked Christmas season that maybe in the quietness you can find peace from our Savior 
who was the prince of peace. God wants to speak to you today. And God is with you. I don't know who's watching, whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you're watching, God is with you. Let me pray for you, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to earth. We celebrate the birth of Christ, this, this supernatural birth that took place in Bethlehem all those years ago, that you became one of us, that you came uh, to be with us, but that you would be with us always to the end of the age, that you would never leave us or forsake us. Lord, I pray that you would bless each one watching, that you would let them know that you're with them right now. That in the midst of social distancing and a lot of canceled plans, that you are there, that you are with them, that in our loneliness we could and should turn to you. Lord, help us to recognize your grace in the midst of turmoil. Lord, we thank you that you are with us. Lord, we praise you and we worship you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Thanks so much for joining me today online. Uh, continue praying uh, for the church here and, and for us here at the Sweet Home Evangelical Church and all that is going on. I'm praying for you. There's a, there's a lot of people that are watching that I don't really know who's watching, but I, I do pray for those that watch online that God would bless you. Pray that God would be with you right now. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week.